Hi, my name's uh, Peter Clark. I go to Ernie Hanger High. When I leave school, I want to be a pilot. But um, today I'm here to check out being an air warfare specialist. As an air warfare specialist, you'll be mission crew on the P3K2 Orion, learning to use highly advanced sensor systems. Oh, g'day, Peter. How's it going? Yeah, I'm good. Ah, oh, cool. Sergeant Simon Martelli is a training coordinator for Five Squadron. He'll show Peter around the base today. Jump into these. All right. And then we'll meet you out on the aircraft. OK, sounds good. Reconnaissance and surveillance aircraft came to prominence in the Royal New Zealand Air Force in 1941, when the famous Five Squadron was formed. With the threat of a Japanese invasion in the South Pacific, flying boats were used to seek and destroy enemy submarines. When World War II ended, the role of Five Squadron changed to surveillance and search and rescue. During that time, the role of the air warfare specialist has become more complex, but the same skills required to find a uh, periscope of a submarine sticking up out of the water are the same skills required to find a fishing buoy or a yacht in distress. In 1966, the first P-3 Orions arrived, heralding the end of the flying boats and a move to land-based aircraft. The P-3 Orions look virtually the same today, but the surveillance equipment has had significant upgrades. Wow. So this is it. This is the mighty P-3K Orion of the Royal New Zealand Air Force. And this is New Zealand's only long-range maritime patrol aircraft. What's that thing on the front? And it's a gyro-stabilised camera, so when we're flying around, it'll still keep nice and steady. Uh, and what it's got, see, it's got three different windows in there. Yeah. It's got three different cameras in there. One of them is like a TV camera, and it's a colour one, and it's got a, got a, a continuous field of view, can zoom in, zoom out. There's another one, which is a, a long-range black and white uh, TV, uh, and then there's another one which is an infrared camera as well, and that looks the same during the night time as it does during the day. Whoa, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, what we've also got up here is a radar. We keep our radar in here, it spins around, we look for contacts on the water. It might be fishing boats, merchant vessels, submarine masts, or there might be a little person stuck in their little dinghy um, that needs rescuing, and we'll use that to try and find them. All right, so this is the Bombay in here. Uh, we can carry uh, bombs and torpedoes, uh, but what we've got set up in here now is uh, two life rafts so in the big canisters, and then there's uh, some other survival aids in the smaller canisters. Right, eh? so right above us, this is the mad boom. Uh, in there is a sensor that follows the Earth's magnetic field as we fly around in it, and it measures little disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field. So these disturbances might be a uh, ship in the water, or a submarine, or even a shipwreck. If we fly over it, or near it, or around it, this thing here will pick it up. Right, so these Orions are powered by an Allison T56 turboprop engine. It's got a gas turbine up the top that then comes down into a gearbox that then spins a propeller. Uh, now the way that this works is that uh, we have the propeller and the engine running at a constant speed. And then what we do is we change the pitch of the propeller. So if we want to go faster, increase the angle, give it a bigger bite. When we're on the ground, we can actually reverse the pitch of the propeller and, uh, and we can use it to slow it down or even make the aircraft go backwards on the tarmac if we really need to. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool on my beam, right? Yeah, not bad, eh? You certainly get you along, all right? All right, so down here, Pete, this is what we call the tack rail. All these seats are connected in one big rail, so we're going to all slide up one end if we really wanted to. Uh, but this is where all the tactical uh, or going ons of the aircraft happen uh, down here. This station here, this is the TACO station. They basically run the mission when we go flying. These two panels here, these are for our weapons that we can drop from the aircraft. So they will set this, uh, make the settings on the torpedo, or they can even drop bombs off the wings. Or even when we're carrying life rafts, we'll load those up into the bomb bay, and, uh, and the TACO can drop them from here if he needs to. So this station here, this is the navigator station. This person is uh, mostly responsible for the position of the aircraft and knowing where we are and plotting all our contacts uh, and even uh, organising our flight plans, getting us to and from a certain area. These two stations here are the air warfare sensor specialist stations. This one here is the uh, electronic surveillance measures or ESM person. Uh, and these two little funny black things over there with the little squiggly lines on them, yeah. they're just listening out for other radars that are out there. Right. This is the radar station. Uh, and this is basically the eyes and ears of the, of the aircraft. This is a, a really good tool for uh, showing us land or picking up any contacts that are in the water. Or we can even pick up clouds as well. And if we have to fly through some really bad weather, it's the radar operator who will tell the pilots which way to fly and which way to get out of trouble. This here is the radio operator station. So this is a person who uh, keeps in contact with their headquarters in Wellington. Uh, so they've got some very long range radios here that they'll use 
they'll type up messages, almost like your MSN chat type thing. Yeah, and uh, and they'll send them off that way. So what's through here? That's the flight deck, mate. We don't go there. Airmen are expected to maintain a reasonable level of fitness. The benefits are manifold. Uh, when you're flying around, there's all sorts of forces acting on you. There's G, there's the stress of being up early in the morning, uh, there's bouncing around over top of waves and lots of turbulence. It's very, very hard on the body. Keeping fit and strong is a very important part of the job. We use sport as a, as a bit of a release. Uh, every Friday we have a squadron sport where we head out on the field and we all have a bit of a run around together. Uh, it's great for, for teamwork. Uh, on the aircraft, we're, we're a giant team, uh, all working for the, for the same goal. Oh, that's my phone. Uh, Corporal Campbell, can you call everyone in, please? Here we come, team. Uh, can we just the duty crew gather around? I just, we've just had a call out uh, for an immediate launch. The crew have been called to a mission. There are suspected illegal fishing boats operating off the Bay of Plenty coastline. Uh, all duty crew to report to Five Ops for immediate launch. Protecting the country's border is a full-time operation. The crew of the P3 Orion are on call 24-7. It's part of the excitement of being an airman. Once on board, the crew works swiftly to arc up the equipment in preparation for takeoff. All systems are checked, and then Peter Jackson, today's air warfare officer, updates the mission brief and checks the state of readiness. Today, it's a reduced four-hour patrol in the uh, greater Bay of Plenty area on behalf of the Ministry of Fisheries. So before we go flying, we have what's called a plainside brief. And the purpose of that brief is to tie in all of the information that's been collected during our pre-flight from all the uh, people on board. Uh, weather situation at the moment, uh, as you can see there's a large low sitting out to the east of New Zealand and a couple of fronts pushing their way up from the south. Uh, that's bringing some bad weather with it, so uh, radar keep an eye out for the cells today. And optics. Alright, um, expected optic ranges today are 10 miles detect on a long liner and 5 miles detect on a small fishing boat. Maria told me that I might have to give a brief. I was pretty nervous, so she wrote it down on a piece of paper what I had to say, and I read it out to myself. Didn't have a clue what it meant, but everyone else knew, yeah. Roger, thanks for that. Um, let's get to it. <laughs> the forecast is for a weather front to come through at some stage, which will bring the radar operator into play. As a radar operator, you are in, involved in uh, keeping the aircraft away from land and away from weather. Uh, so as a brand new 18 year old radar operator, you might be telling a very senior pilot uh, which way to fly the aircraft to, uh, to keep away, or keep the aircraft safe, keep the crew safe. Okay, so Pete, uh, if you look at the screen in front of you, you see there's a, a, a line of weather here on the nose that looks quite rough. The pilots can't see that it's rough out the front, so we, we need to tell them. Um, pilot radar, weather on the nose, 23 miles. Two hours into the mission and Pete spots a contact on the radar that could be a fishing um, vessel. Uh, Taco radar, uh, radar contact three, into the bearing uh, 033 at uh, eight miles. The plane prepares to drop below 800 feet and the crew don their safety vests. The next step is to make visual contact with the vessel and confirm its call sign. Pilot's visual uh, radar 3. Uh, radar 3, uh, long liner, white hull, white superstructure. Chinese characters on the stern. Tracking 2503 knots. 30 seconds to the Warning for the rotating, uh, course I confirm, Bravo Juliet 4967, line scan in the water, ready to complete. Put off complete, it's all put off complete. A beam now, 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 Bravo Juliet 4967, be in the working area, pilot's complete. After establishing a visual, optics operator Corporal Maria Captain puts the high tech cam to use. Course I confirmed, uh, line scan in the water, field activity, optics complete. With the call sign identified, Flight Lieutenant Jackson checks to see if the vessel has fishing rights. Okay, I've checked the New Zealand license, license list and uh, 
Reporting back to HQ and a whole new language for our rookie airman. Hotel Quebec, this is Papa 3 Kilo. The one contact is to pass. Uh, the contact is Bravo Juliet. He's doing an alright job. He sounds a bit nervous when he's going out and he's also having difficulty with some of the technical jargon. 17246 East, over. P3K, this is uh, Hotel Quebec. Proceed with infringement action, over. Wilco, out. The Orion completes three passes over the fishing vessel to collect more information, then turns for home. Her mission complete. After eight years of being in the Royal New Zealand Air Force and uh, six and a half years uh, of working on board the Orion, uh, I'm always finding that there's always something new out there. Uh, there's always a new experience or something new to learn or something that you've never ever seen before, some different place that you might be going to. Uh, there's always that, that element of what's next, what's around the corner, you never know. You think that it's just the pilot, but like yeah, today, I noticed it's like more than that, it's a team effort. It's it's not just the pilot, you got all the people in the back working together, it's just a big teamwork situation, it's pretty cool. To enter the Royal New Zealand Air Force, you must be at least 17 years old and a citizen of New Zealand. There are entrance tests, including fitness and a medical exam. You should have a keen interest in maths and physics. Skills are gained on the job. There's a basic military recruit course, followed by a warfare specialist course. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.